Welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends, a program to reach those hurting from addictions. Barbara, Becky, and Candy, due to the addiction epidemic, teach the Word of God and then feature addiction-free testimonies. Drugs and alcohol are killing people every day, destroying families, and affecting precious children. They know firsthand Jesus is the answer and can bring freedom and restoration to lives and homes. Hello, friends. Whether you're watching by TV or you're listening by radio or podcast, welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose. That's me. And friends, Becky Brewer and Barbara Olney. Hello. They're on our board, along with Dr. Mike McFarlane, our vice president. Every week, we bring you the Word of God in some topic that will help your spiritual growth. Hmm. And then we feature addiction pre testimonies. Now, today's topic is Christ's return. Did you know that death is not the end of the story? When Christ returns, all believers, both dead and alive, will be united with him. Because Jesus was resurrected, so will we be. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14 in an amplified version says, Now we do not want you to be uninformed believers about those who are asleep in death, so that you will not grieve for them as the others do who have no hope beyond his present life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did, even so God, in this same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. The graves are going to open up, and the believers will rise to meet Christ in the air first, then also those of us who are alive at that time. First, Thessalonians 4, 15, and 16 in the Amplified Version says, For we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way precede into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Woo, hallelujah. Yes. We need not fear when loved ones die or world events look bad. These verses should comfort us as we put our trust and our hope in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. First Thessalonians 4, verses 17 and 18 in the Amplified Bible state, Then we who are alive and remain on this earth will simultaneously mm-hmm. be caught up or raptured together with them, the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, come forth and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. The next verse talks about seeing Jesus and how we should prepare to be with him. First John 3, 3 in the Amplified, and everyone who has this hope confidently placed in him purifies himself just as he is pure, holy, undefiled, and guiltless. Amen. Amen. That is such a comfort to me that to know that we're not just living life on this earth and when our lives die or we die, that um, that's just the end of it. Yeah. Um, people that feel that way live, live like this is, they live like this is all there is, is what's here on earth. And they put everything, um, into this life, into having the most money, the most fun, that's good. Um, you know, having the most things. But that's not why where our hope is. Our hope is it is in living one day with Jesus. Yes, yes. And, and being there with Jesus and all believers and living for eternity. That's something that I can't hardly even comprehend of time that doesn't ever end. Living a life to go to heaven is basically doing the basics, just what you have to get by to, to go to heaven. But God also promises so much more on earth when we follow him. Uh, he promises this, his joy and his peace and his comfort. Yeah. And he doesn't say that we won't have problems because we do. Trust me. Um, three of us have had lots of, of trials and troubles in our lives. But God gets us through them, yes. gets us through them, and even while we're going through them, gives us peace yes. that we can't even understand ourselves. It's not something that we can explain. Indeed. So, so keep this hope in you that you're not only changing your life for now, but you're changing your life so that you can live in eternity with the Lord Jesus. That's good. 
And by living your life as a an example and an ambassador for others, you're bringing your loved ones along. Ooh, come on. That's so good. That's so good. Yeah, it is. I'm reminded with this teaching about three different things that it talks about in the Bible. And it's in Matthew. I says, I think it says, um, when when the rapture happens and you're face to face with with Jesus Christ and he says, Oh, and you say, Oh Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? And he says, Hold on, hold on. Depart from me, yes. you workers of iniquity. I never really knew you. Yes. And so I'm kind of reminded of that. Um, like Jesus is after the relationship. He's after the relationship with us. Yeah. And the other thing is that um, no man knows the hour or the day when the That's rapture. Right. It also That's says that, right. that no man and that the life, our life is a vapor. Yeah. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow because we're always wanting to kick the can down the road. Right. We got plenty of time. We got plenty of time yeah. to get this right or that right. Well, when no man knows the hour or the day right. and then our life is a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. And both yes. of those things are very biblical. Yes. I do not want to stand before Jesus and and be like, but Lord, I did all these things. I did all these busy things in yeah. your name, but I never really knew you. And yes. so I think when I think about this teaching, let's take time to know the Lord. Let's take time to build a relationship with yeah. Jesus Christ. That's and that's what I, uh, that's my heart behind this one. Oh, that's good. That's good. And 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 first John three, three, uh, Becky, you read it. Everyone who has this hope confidently placed in him purifies himself. Now, I get from that purifies himself, there's something we got to do. Ooh, come on. We That's can't good. just say, God, take this from me. That's good. And not not do anything to let go of it. Right. You know. That's good. Uh, you can say, all right, I used to smoke cigarettes, for instance. You could say, oh, God, take these cigarettes from me. But, hey, if you keep buying them, and you never lay them down. That's <laughs> right. an example, okay? There's lots more examples. But uh, but purifies himself just as he is pure. See, God's holy. And sin will separate us from mm, the holy God. So good. Becky, you were a, a former addict, and mm -hmm. you were in prison in five states. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a former stripper and a prostitute. And, and Becky, uh, Barbara's hasn't been like we have, but man, like she admits. Yeah. The Bible says all... Bad. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that, see, that's a problem, too. A lot of people think they're so good that they don't do all Ooh, the things that Aunt Becky did. That's good. That they're fine. They're going to go to heaven. They're not. They're going to go in the rapture. But, you sin know. Is sin. S sin is sin. Exactly. And and we need to get our life right. Matter of fact, when I backslid, uh, I, uh, when I, I had a stripping business and I let it go, but then three and a half years later, I end up living with somebody and I remember I used to call when I'd call my mother, and she didn't answer the phone, and she was always home. She didn't drive. If she didn't answer that phone quick enough, I thought, I hope the rapture has it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, God kept knocking on my heart, wouldn't leave me alone. He wanted to make sure that I belonged to him. That's good. And belonged to me, and that someday we are going to see That's so good. Face. When that rapture happens, or if we die before, we, before that even happens, you know, mm. we have that hope. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I want to share one more thing about this because you reminded me of it, okay. Candy, that, um, you know, the, the biblically in Scripture, it says that in Jesus' heart is that none should perish. Yes. Is that none should perish. Yes. Right. That's that's Jesus' heart. Yes. And so that has kind of become my heart. You know, when you talk about the, the lifestyle that I had all the years and IV drug addiction and all the prisons and and so now we, Kendi and I, go into the jails. It's yeah. so important for me to go back and yeah. teach these women. It's it's the heart of Jesus Christ that none should perish. Yeah. I want you to know how to be set free yeah. from addiction or any number of things, any life controlling issue. It's not just yeah. alcohol and addiction. It's yeah. so many yeah. things, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, uh, it's it's just Jesus's heart that none should perish. So what a responsibility that we have. Um, to be that representative for Jesus on the earth and then to share yeah. the freedom with other people. Hey, no matter how bad we think people are or you think you Ooh, come on, no matter how that's good, you think you're, you know, you're beyond forgiveness. You are not. That's right. That's good, Lord Barbara. God. God's right. It was all. Yes. Amen. He loves us. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. Amen. Well, right now we're going to take time out. We're going to show you a little clip of Barbara Omer. She's a nurse. And she's going to tell you the health dangers that can happen to your body and your mind when taking alcohol or drugs. Friends, I'm Barbara Ferguson. 
a registered nurse, and at Candy Rose's request, we're bringing you another segment of Addiction Health Dangers. Today I'll be sharing with you the dangers of alcohol. First of all, alcohol interferes with the brain's communication paths and can affect the way the brain looks and works. These disruptions can change your mood, your behavior, and make it harder to think clearly and move with coordination. Drinking can damage your heart and cause such problems as cardiomyopathy, which is a stretching and drooping and enlarging of the heart muscle. It can cause uh, abnormal rhythms of your heart called arrhythmias. It can cause stroke and high blood pressure. Drinking also takes a big toll on your liver and can lead to fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, fibrosis, cirrhosis, and pancreatitis, which is extremely painful. There are many types of cancers that also result from alcohol abuse. Please don't drink. Jesus loves you. Now, we also want to show you some addiction-free testimonies. People is going to tell you about the devastation, mm. what the devil did in their life, but how God turned it around, and now he has restored their lives. Amen. Hello, I'm Evangelist Alveda King, and I am in a fabulous conference with Christian women in ministry. I have a personal testimony, being a member of the family of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. My dad, Reverend A.D. King, and my mother, Mrs. Naomi King, birthed me in 1951. My mom actually wanted an abortion, and my granddaddy, Martin Luther King Sr., said, you can't do that. She's a little girl with bright skin and bright red hair, and she's going to bless many people. So all those years ago, I was born, and I lived a life in a Christian family, but I did not accept Jesus Christ until 1983. Prior to that, I went away from my Christian upbringing. I did all kinds of things that I should not do. They were not Christ-like. And as a result, I ended up with two abortions, a miscarriage. I became an alcoholic for a little while. That was kind of shocking for my family to deal with. And I even ended up in a sex trafficking ring. Can you believe that? However, I birthed one child, I had two abortions, and a miscarriage. And then I got pregnant again, and I wanted to abort that baby. And my granddaddy said, no, that's my great-grandchild. So as a result, I birthed the baby, had two abortions and a miscarriage, and then got pregnant, got married, and birthed five more children. So I'm the mother of six living children and 11 grandchildren. In 1983, a lady introduced me to Jesus Christ. It was no longer granddaddy's Jesus or daddy and mama's Jesus or uncle and Mel's Jesus. Jesus became my personal Lord and Savior. God told me after I was set free, just tell people however they're living, they don't have to live like that they can be born again. And so as a born again Christian today, I take a lot of my life going around telling how good God is, how good Jesus is, how awesome Holy Spirit is. And once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you get all of heaven, the ministering and warring angels. You get to be a family with other Christians. It's just so marvelous and so powerful. So I wanted to share my testimony about how God forgave me, how I was set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And today, I'm full of peace and joy. I'm an old lady now, 73 years old. Somebody who's 90 said, that's not old, you're just a baby. <laughs> Teenagers will say, you're really old, yeah, whatever. But I'm here, and I love you. I'm with Christian Women in Media. Got a new TV show called The Vision TV. And you can see us at thevisiontvshow.com. And we'd like to say it like this. The world, the world has a view. God has the vision. Write the vision and make it plain so that those who see it can run with it. God bless you, Alveda King. Hi, my name is Denise Mountainay. I'm actually from Canada, but living in Mexico right now. And we're at the Christian Women in Media Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, it's such an honor to be here with so many beautiful women 
who are on a mission to change our messes into a message or share our stories and it's very exciting and so a little bit about my testimony um, you might be able to relate uh, I was raped my story is so typical for millions of women uh, sadly I was raped at the age of 13 at a sleepover at a girlfriend's uh, when her older brother came in the room and raped me that night and I hit, basically my virginity was stolen I never gave it away and then uh, I never told anyone it was you know a secret I, I just felt so much shame and uh, I felt defiled I thought no nice guy will ever want to marry me now because I'm not a virgin and uh, even though I was not a Christian did not grow up in a Christian home or anything I just felt that shame inside and then I started drinking and doing drugs and um, you know looking for love in all the wrong places and so at the age of 16 I had my first love and um, I got pregnant and when I got pregnant my first reaction was you know I can do this and I figured you know I could I, I'm gonna make this you know make this um, make make it through this uh, pregnancy but when I told my mother that I was pregnant she said Denise you're only 16 you have your whole life in front of you she said just you know have this operation and forget about it and get on with your life so I thought oh I can just get unpregnant and it's okay with my mom it's okay with the doctor okay with the government so I thought wow it must be okay and uh, so like many women I was just pressured into having that first abortion thinking it's okay you know it's not really a baby it's just a clump of tissue um, my second pregnancy at 26 um, when I told my boyfriend I was pregnant he went in a fit of rage you better have an abortion I never want to see you again I was heartbroken and he said he kicked me out and didn't want to see me and I was devastated and uh, when I went to that doctor that time uh, and uh, he's you know he told me I was pregnant I said you know how far along we figured out I was about eight nine weeks pregnant and um, and so I said what's there what's developed and he basically just took a piece of paper and he put a little dot in the page and he said oh it's nothing it's a clump of tissue well he lied to me he totally lied to me I had no idea about the truth a fetal development that from the moment of conception all the DNA is there if it's a boy a girl um, you know how you're gonna grow uh, arms and legs fingers and toes beautiful eyes and nose you know I had no idea about the truth of fetal development and um, I was deceived I was lied to like most of us and when I got the revelation one day that oh my gosh abortion killed my children that these were not clumps of tissue I was just broken I grieved I wailed I repented um, for the sin of abortions and uh, the other thing was uh, the fact of how legal abortion is hurting women I had two lumps removed from my left breast because do you know there's 61 not two or three but 61 published studies linking breast cancer to induced abortion and you probably have never heard about it because it's being suppressed by the media and the cancer societies because it's politi politically not correct to say anything negative about the A word yet women are dying and getting breast cancer as a as a cause from abortion and the other thing is the cervical uterine damage abortion is not a safe procedure it's harmful to women and um, it also causes major depression because one day it hits you oh my god what did I do turn to alcohol and drugs that's what happened to me I want to try and numb the pain so I started drinking heavily I just didn't care about myself I just wanted to die and so I drank and drank did drugs all kinds of different drugs and um, it wasn't until I got the revelation and found out that Jesus Christ died for all my sins even abortion and uh, one night in my little Toronto apartment I heard a voice saying 
Jesus is coming in with your three children. I'd had three abortions. I never thought if they were boys or girls or how old they were or anything. And in my mind, I'm thinking he's going to come in with three little fetuses. Well, he walked through the wall with his arms out like this. And there were my three children as old as they would have been at that time. And I just knew their names. Jennifer, she would have been like 15 or 16 at that time. This is 30 years ago. And she looked so much like me, like anyone would say, oh my gosh, that's your daughter. And I'm bawling, I'm just crying. And all I could say is, Jennifer, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. She said, I forgive you, mom. And then Daniel, please forgive me. And they were beautiful children. He said, I forgive you, mom. And Rebecca, please forgive me. She would have been five or six, please forgive me. She goes, I forgive you, mommy. Don't cry, we're with Jesus. And I was wiping the tears and they disappeared. And so I know that I know that our children are in heaven with the Lord. And I want you to know that all things are possible with the Lord and that if you just confess your sin to God, if you've never told anyone you need to share your story with someone else because then God gave me the boldness and courage because I said here I am send me to the nations whatever you want and he began to open doors I thought you know who's going to want to marry me or whatever but I've been married now for 33 years next month uh, to an awesome man and uh, it's the greatest joy in my life that God blessed me with the son I wrote this book, um, The Bride, the Serpent, and the Seed, and God blessed us with a beautiful, handsome, awesome son. And so I feel so blessed that I got the pleasure of being a mother. The Lord bless you. Pray. Prayer is huge. You need to pray to God and read his word in the Bible and become a born-again Christian, and God will bless you and your family. Thanks for listening. Now we'd like to say a prayer with you. If you're ready to give your heart, come on. That's yes. good. We'd like for you, to, for you to lead you in a prayer so that you can do that. Remember, no one is too far gone. That's good. Yes. So um, let's just um, repeat after me, if you would. Yes. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear, Dear Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus. I thank you so much that you love me. I, I thank, thank you so much that you love me. me. Even though I'm not where I should be, you love me anyway. Even though I'm not where I should be, you love me anyway. Jesus, I want you to come into my heart and my life. Jesus, Jesus I, want I want you to come, come into my heart and my life. I want to turn my life over to you. I want to turn my life over to you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Help me to be more like you every day. Help me to be more like you every day, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for this opportunity. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for the opportunity. To become more like you. To, to become, become more, more like you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', Jesus name. name, amen. Have you ever tried to tell a hopeless person about Jesus but just couldn't find the words? Have you ever thought about impacting your community for the cause of Christ and just didn't know what to do? Bam! How to be a Hope Dealer Training Conference, May 3rd and 4th, 2024, Hendersonville, North Carolina. Hello, my name is Danny Stone. I'm the co-founder of Restoration Hope with my mother, Sheila Stone. We are a faith-based ministry that helps men that's coming out of prison and also off the streets to find Jesus. We're mainly a discipleship program. We like to say um, instead of prison to streets, we go prison to praise. And through the love of Jesus Christ, we turn a mess into a message. Hey everyone, my name is Alan Coker and I'm the director of Shalom Recovery Centers in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We offer nine month residential drug and alcohol treatment for both men and women. Our program is kind of like a transitional living program where people go and work jobs and try to get introduced back into regular life while they're recovering from drugs and alcohol. And we are a faith-based program. We believe in Jesus Christ, and we focus on a relationship with him as the basis of a long-term recovery. So if you are in need or if you know of someone in need, feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We look forward to serving you. Thank you.
My name is Tim Bumpus. I am the president of Project New Start Treatment Center in Newport, Arkansas. We run a men's treatment center and a women's treatment center. We also have a pregnancy center. We just opened up a home for mothers with their children to come to treatment. And we also have a transition homes after you graduate. We put you in an apartment. We help you get a job. If you want to get your life together, we have a perfect place to do that. If you need us, give us a call at 870-523-8413. Or go to our website at projectnewstart.org. Thank you and God bless you. Hello, my name is Becky Brewer, and I have a ministry more than a mugshot. And I have that ministry because I was incarcerated in five states across the country. I now do a recovery meeting at Lakeview Assembly of God in Hot Springs, Arkansas, every Monday night from 530 to 630. And I do this. It's biblical. We put the Word of God in our everyday life. We apply the Word of God to recovery uh, and how to break free. It's Break Free Recovery Group. Monday night, Lakeview Assembly of God, 5.30 to 6.30. Come join us, and let's share freedom through Christ together. Thank you. Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X-rated to G-rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life-changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help. There is hope. Tell me how you came to know me Was it at some preacher's plea Were you all bound up with worry When he came to set you free Did it take you your whole lifetime Release the debt you owe But did you answer him the first time And relinquish all control I need to hear somebody testify I need to hear somebody say Hello friends Thank you for joining our show today, Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends. Barbara, Becky, and I thank you, and we hope you'll come back every week if you can. Our TV show airs not only across the United States, but also worldwide, 200 nations, and also podcasts and radio. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we.